Hi, I'm John Astley, and I'd like to share with you my experience with the Phantom 3 and the new intelligent flight modes, plus a few other innovations that I've devised. I downloaded the software and uh, transferred it to one of these, iPad Mini 3, and after the download, um, which was reported as successful, I could see no difference, no new menus, nothing. I loaded the software again, but could still see no new menus. Then somebody whispered in my ear, try pressing the little switch on the side here to F mode. And there, lo and behold, appeared a little icon at the top of the screen. Very small, but very significant. It would cost a lot of money and a lot of R&D if we could wring 25% more out of the batteries on that aircraft. But what an advantage. But in my estimation, we spend about 25% of our flight time fiddling with menus. And in the intelligent flight modes, you can't see these menus until you take off. So um, in this video, I've overlaid all the menus I've found to do with intelligent flight modes. And uh, I hope that will enable us to get familiar with them without having to eat batteries. Some of the distances and altitudes displayed may be a little bit out because I've had to borrow the menus from different flights and paste them over the current live action. But I hope it helps. I tapped the new icon and up came this selection of flight modes. So let's try the follow me mode and see how we get on. Please take off the aircraft. So if we want to see anything, we've got to be flying. Sounds like learning to juggle knives using real sharp knives first time, but still we try. First menu we get tells us the aircraft will move at a fixed distance from the pilot in follow me mode. The home point is my position. And my position in this case is me in the car with the controller and um, that's a home point. We apply that and we get the menu that's um, continuous while we're following. It says the aircraft will hover if it's 200 meters away from the pilot. Leave F mode to exit intelligent navigation mode. So that's your panic button really, is uh, swinging that switch from F back to P and it'll blow all this away and all your controls and revert back to normal. Um, you can vary the altitude while you're doing this but you can't get lower than five meters and you can't get closer than five meters so off we go car moves off me in it with the controller and we hope the phantom will follow did it follow nope then somebody whispered in my ear again it's your iPad. It has no GPS. Even if the people in the shop told you it had, it only sniffs around the phone masts and gets an approximate triangulation on your position, which is not good enough for this. So get yourself £160 and go out and buy this thing. This is the Bad Elf GP GPS Pro. It's a great little gadget. Bad Elf uses all the aeroplane stuff, SBAS, WAS, EGNOS, MSAS, and you can fly a 380 Airbus on this, it's all uh, got all the bells and whistles. So we have that with us in the shirt pocket, it's going to Bluetooth to that and um, you're a walking GPS beacon. The Phantom is set up 25 meters in front of the car and to the west. This mode is called follow me but a better description would be maintain a position 25 meters to the west of the control unit which is in the car. So as we move off the Phantom will back off to maintain this configuration.
Now as we turn left, heading south, the Phantom maintains 25 metres to the west in tracking mode. turn left again, heading east, and the Phantom is now following the car, getting a bit left behind, and I'll stop for a while and let it catch up. This screenshot shows where we've been so far, the yellow line. I'll blow it up a bit and we can see now that um, the Phantom is, is on a mission to catch up and it's travelling very fast. Um, you've got the red Phantom there, you've got the GPS just behind the car, lagging a bit, and the car is the white arrow approaching home point. The grey line shows our future course and you can see that the Phantom actually overshoots and hunts back into the final position. Narrowly missing of course the tree that we um, didn't foresee this but uh, we managed to grab a bit of altitude at the time and uh, miss it fortunately. It's a great move this but um, beware of obstructions if it overshoots or has to cut corners, it will cut corners when it's going very fast. It's found it now and it's just closing back to 25 metres from the car. I'll put it back into P mode and uh, cancel the follow me. Now we're going to do some waypoints. You can select a existing route that's been auto-saved. We'll create a new mission. We're going to um, fly the course we want to run. Um, we're going to head off here to the south. We'll make this our first waypoint in this place. Um, we can um, record this waypoint by pressing the C1 switch underneath the controller on the left as you hold the controller. Now we'll um, increase our altitude and we'll come up to waypoint 2 which we record again pressing C1 switch. You can always delete these things by pressing C2 switch. Come up to the north And we've come up now to 400 feet, so I've increased the altitude each waypoint. This is waypoint 3. Now we come back to our home point for waypoint 4. And um, if I can find it, there it is. So we're back at home point, we mark waypoint 4. Um, we should get um, a display something like this. There's your four waypoints with the altitudes um, marked on them. Press done on that. We've now got um, a new menu. Now it's given us a few options here. From the start, the aircraft's heading could be consistent with the record. That means the way it was pointing at the time the um, waypoints were recorded and if they're different amongst the waypoints it will interpolate between them. Consistent with the route means the Phantom's going to look down the track line you know, leaving one waypoint heading towards the next it'll face the next one. 
and there's a free mode you can um, adjust it as you go along your speed there it varies from very very slow to um, I think about nearly nine knots you can just move the white ball we'll apply that and we get a menu telling us how far we've got to go we can pause it if we like and we can adjust the speed as we go or completely hide that menu phantom moving off to waypoint one we're moving um, fairly slowly so it'll go right to the corners but if you go very fast it will cut the corners so beware of putting a waypoint the other side of a big tree or obstruction Waypoint 2 turns its head into face waypoint 3 as we set it for consistent with course. Highest point and it'll come back now down to home point which is where we're standing. I chickened out there and uh, put it into manual before it did anything drastic near, near me. We're going to use home lock. We get this menu saying that we pull the stick back. We're pulling the stick down and move the aircraft towards the home point. We've backed the aircraft off in this mode. I pull the stick back, which would normally be the forward for this aircraft, and it returns to the home point. Not quite, a bit to the left there as it's seen from the Phantom, but um, I've seen it do that a few times before. That's home lock. We now try course lock, which is similar but um, doesn't reference to the home lock, to the home point at all. I've applied the mode and I'm setting off west. We'll whiz along a bit. Right, if I pull the stick back it'll return along this course, not necessarily to the home point. And uh, this is much the normal behaviour for the aircraft. But I now face north with these course locks still applied and push the stick forward. It'll track left to the west again, repeating the course that it did on the previous move. I pull the stick back towards me. And I stop it here. Um, you see it doesn't refer to the home point and it would have continued on to the east tracking sideways which if I pull the stick back now it continues to the east push the right stick forward back to the west and I've stopped it there. We're selecting point of interest. We've put the aircraft above what we intend to be the point of interest, it's the operator in this case, and we record the POI. Now we're going to back off 23 feet It's got to be more than five metres. We check our um, 
return to home altitude is sufficient and apply. As we move off we can see we can now, we've got the options of uh, altering the radius by pushing the stick forward or back. Pushing the stick forward will decrease it. We can turn the head in left and right, we can alter the altitude, we can pause it, we can vary the speed or the direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now I've pushed the stick forward and it's coming towards me. I pull the stick back and we get a slingshot effect there. I've just altered the radius. Away from intelligent flight modes, um, a system I use a lot when creating videos where I want precise slow movements. Now this is highly technical. It's called the Blue Motion Eye Plates. One moving part, pop it over the sticks, and it's a one handed job now. Speed depends on the size of the hole in the plate. And um, you can have square holes, you can have holes bored offset. So that as you rotate the thing, it'll uh, give you an adjustment on the speed you're going to use. Um, main thing is, it's not only slow, controlled, but the speed is consistent. It's not speeding up and slowing down or anything like that. I cut these from 3mm aluminium or aluminium, depending on where you live. It was 3mm or 8th inch thick. Um, the two inch hole saw that I used left me a piece about 49, 48 mil diameter, which carefully dressed the edge to get it um, down to 47.5, and then counterbore the middle, originally eight mil, but I've got others at um, 10 mil, 12 and a half mil, and seven mil, so, um, and even ones with square holes, so it's up to the imagination. Shot here shows us walking alongside with the phantom flying low to the ground and the speed is indeed really consistent I think that was the uh, seven mil plate that we used for that shot this was an eight mil plate again speed is absolutely consistent This was the um, 12 and a half mil hole. I'm going a bit faster, but again, consistent speed, dead steady. Because it's a one-handed job, it's now possible to um, control the Phantom with one hand, with the uh, remote controllers on the passenger seat here, and drive the car with the other hand, and uh, quite accurately. You can use these plates in conjunction with the gain and expo tuning. These really show now because you're only using the little middle bit of the stick. The lower you put those numbers, like 0.3, it's softer and softer in the middle. And 0.7 is the fastest, but um, you, you do notice that menu working when you're using these plates. Well that's it. I hope that's given people who are new to intelligent flight modes some insight into um, the procedure and uh, ideas for new innovations. So fly safe.